This is my favorite Jesus thing on the internet. <laughs> you only live once, laugh out loud, just kidding. <laughs> that is what we celebrate on this day, uh, that Jesus has played the final joke on death. Um, death always thought it got the last laugh, now we know that we do. So that's what uh, historically the church has celebrated on this day. Uh, I don't know what took me so long to figure out this is what the church did historically, but I'm glad we're there now. Uh, so I expect as the years go on uh, for you to start dressing more outlandishly on this day, uh, be too ready to turn in more jokes. Uh, the uh, kazoo, important thing, do not blow through the kazoo. It will do nothing and you'll look kind of silly. You, you, you hum. It's a vehicle for humming. Uh, so you, you hum. to save the coffee pot. <laughs> so now, going there you go. So you have these in your bulletins. If you think the joke is laugh out loud funny, you're happy that you heard it, your life is better off now because you have been entertained, 10. If you hear something that makes you want to go and, and, and uh, throw up, uh, <laughs> Something that you kind of feel like you're a worse person for having heard it. Um, something that you kind of, you're like, maybe I should have just slept in this morning. Then you hold up the one. Uh, so we're going to have uh, a later in the service an opportunity for you uh, to uh, share any jokes that you might have. Uh, if you mail, if you email them in. Man, this is, it's really only a bird for me. Uh, I thought it was funny to flip the inside of the bulletin over, but literally every time I open it, then I have to, so I can, and, and I'm the one that probably ends up opening the bulletin the most, so it's a joke on me. I, I immediately regret that every time. I hope you also notice that the date is turned upside down. Uh, I think that's, we're going to have a couple of skits today, uh, after this little item on on Kazoo, that's when you'll have an opportunity uh, to share any jokes that you might have, um, and, and so there's going to be a lot of different stuff, uh, but we're going to kick off with laughter yoga, so I invite a chair to come forward and lead us in laughter yoga. <laughs> Now, if you're a little intimidated by what we're doing, it's 
silliness part of it, get over it for the day. <laughs> you can go home and you can conservative and you know be a straight self. I had to give Leanne a bad time and say, yeah, greedy. <laughs>
You probably noticed there are quilts here. Uh, part of the tradition at this church is twice a year you get to help bless the quilts of this church that are sent out uh, around the world that uh, change people's lives, that fill them with warmth, that fill them with joy, that fill their houses with color, uh, that remind them that uh, there is more than sadness or fear out there in the world, that there is true hope, true joy, true laughter, true hospitality. And so on this day, uh, we're going to bless these quilts. And so when I go like this, uh, you say we celebrate the gifts of our lives. Uh, so let's practice that. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts. Donations of fabric, threads, and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make the backs and fillers, tie and stitch the binding, provide publicity, <coughs> donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food to sustain the quilters, and contribute the money for shipping these quilts. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who together, who work together to make these quilts, the laughter, the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's own hands and heart for another, and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. We send these quilts as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that these quilts will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and the heat, a wall for a home, a carrier for pre precious belongings. May it be a message of care from someone they may never meet. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. We remember those who have received our quilts in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We celebrate the gifts of our lives. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of Lutheran World Relief, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive as we are sown together in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Now off.
a skit put on uh, by our youth. So come on up, youth. This is not the children's sermon. That might have sounded a skit put on by. Death gets the last laugh. 
but we learned that uh, Jesus, through Jesus, we get the last laugh. God gets the last laugh because God has pulled a trick on death and made it not the end of anything. And so that's what we celebrate today is that our world now is filled with hope and joy and laughter uh, because the worst thing that could happen has been taken away. And so it's kind of our job to pass on that laughter. And so I'm going to need your guys' help. <coughs> right here, we can't give out all of them because we need some for the second service. <laughs> but I have 200 laughing packs. <laughs> so we need to make sure that everybody out there gets Laffy Taffy. So I need you guys to go and run out and make sure that everybody gets. So these aren't for you. <laughs> but while you're doing this, I'm going to read a joke and you guys can rate it with your 1 to 10. Okay, don't throw it. Don't throw it. <laughs> So you have to answer it, you just have to say what. So what type of fly loves bread? A butterfly. Okay, come on, you'll, you'll, all get your, you'll, you'll all get more, guys. So keep handing them out. Yeah, you will also get them after you have them out. What bow cannot be tied? A rainbow. Oh. Oh. You guys are really not voting on these. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What was the judge's drink order? What? Just ice. Just ice. I mean, if you've ever read a Laffy Taffy, you should all be one. I need to fix my pen. Do you have any tips? And does everybody have Laffy Taffy? No. Yeah. No. All right, keep handing them out, guys. Keep handing them out out there. It's our job to share laughter. Go give them out. Go give them out. Yeah, that is why they're called Laffy Taffy. What has two hands but no arms? Oh, come on, people. A clock. <laughs> what building has the most hey. stories? A library. A library. Over here. Because there's stories in a book. What's a nocturnal horse? Yeah, but does anybody need Laffy Taffy out there? We have a need for Laffy Taffy. What's a dog's favorite instrument? A trombone. Does everybody have Laffy Taffy? All right, guys, now you guys can get them for yourself. Looks like many of you already went in. <laughs> Good thing. Good self control. What's that? You ready to go back again? How did this one get old?
And now another skit. I don't know whether or not I'll be made fun of in this one, so we'll find out. <laughs>
having at least rice cakes. A man needs milk chocolate. It's polluting your system. But I love milk chocolate, and I won't stop. These rice cakes, it's just going one step too far. I need my burgers, and my steak, and my cheese, and my milk chocolate. That's the toxins talking. Let me make you a special treat. Special treat, eh? So Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the officials of Moab. God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the road as his adversary. Now Balaam was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. So the donkey turned off the road and went, in, went into the field, and Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyard with a wall on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it scraped against the wall and scraped Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck it again. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled. And he struck the donkey with his staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Balaam who apparently is not surprised by a talking donkey, said, Because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand. I would kill you right now. But the donkey, again talking, said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, which you have written all of your life? Have I been in the habit of treating you this way? Just having a logical conversation with the donkey. He said, No. <laughs> and the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand. And Balaam bowed down, falling on his face. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your talking donkey three times? <laughs> I have come out as an adversary, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me, and turned away from me those three times. If it had not turned away, surely, just now, I would have killed you and let the talking donkey live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now therefore, if it is displeasing to you, I will return home. <coughs> the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you to speak. So Balaam went off with the officials of the lot. This is our good news for this Holy Hilarity Sunday. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator and our Savior and friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This Bible story features a talking donkey. For Holy Hilarity Sunday, that's probably all I need to do. <laughs> but I'm up here dressed like this, so I'll talk a little bit more. I still remember my 8th grade Spanish teacher, Miss Madrigal. 
She was a no-nonsense person that seemed somewhat offended that you did not already know Spanish fluently. <laughs> she had a catchphrase, a song really, that she said often enough to me that I ended up memorizing it. El burro sabes más que tú. The donkey still knows more than you. <laughs> it hurt when she said it then, and it still hurts now. <laughs> but after getting to know the story of Balaam's donkey, I've started to wonder if the rhyme, its origination, is really not about an eighth grader trying to learn Spanish, but instead about our Bible reading for today, and really about how wrong we humans get things. Other than the fact uh, that we have uh, the talking donkey from the movie Shrek in our Bible, two things stick out to me uh, in our numbers reading. Two seemingly small things. The first one is in the beginning. Now Balaam was riding on the donkey and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. So the donkey turned off the road and went into the field. Simple, other than there's an angel there. But then a little bit later, we get, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his drawn sword in his hand. He bowed down, falling on his face. Do you see the difference there? Later, God will open the mouth of the donkey, just as God had to open the eyes of Balaam. But does God have to open the eyes of the donkey? It sees with its eyes already open. A burrow sabes mosque too. The donkey still knows more than you. We humans have a superiority complex. We are the rulers of creation. We can split the very atoms. We can fit a whole pizza inside a tiny hot pocket. <laughs> we are so much wiser than anyone and everyone and everything else. But when we really think about it, our eyes are not actually open. <laughs> We think it's a great achievement as humans, but you'll regret it in the long run. <laughs> the donkey's calling us. <laughs> so once I started taking Christianity seriously, once I started taking my faith seriously, I started trying to convert the one in my life that I was most worried about. My dog, Sandy. She joined my family when I was about eight or nine, and when the idea of salvation became a concern in my adolescent mind, I became worried about Sandy. And I would sit with Sandy on the landing between the upstairs and the downstairs. That was her favorite place to sit. And I would sit next to her, and I would slowly walk her through all the proofs for Jesus. You may think I'm making this up for this sermon. I'm not. <laughs> and I literally sat next to her and talked about the disciples coming back, the miracles that Jesus did, and, and, and she was very patient with me. She never cut me off. And I worked tirelessly on her. I mean, many, many days of this. But I never got the impression that I was making progress with her. Probably because she didn't need conversion. El burro sabes más que tú, the donkey still knows more than you. Sandy's eyes were already open. She could see the glories of creation. She could see all that God had done for her and for us. It's our eyes that need to be open. Jesus says in Luke, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life. El burro, el perro, el pájaro, sabes más que tú. The donkey, the 
the dog, the bird, still no more than you. On this holy hilarity Sunday, allow your eyes to be open to the angel, the God in your path that has made a mockery of the curse of death and made a joyful pathway forward for all of us. Amen. 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 So we're going to sing two verses of this little light of mine, and then we'll bring out the kazoos.
Did you hear the one about the bald guy who had no kids? Had no what? He suffocated and died airless. Since this is a church joke, I had to get it from Alexa. <laughs> Why doesn't a, why can't a werewolf tell time? Because it's, it's a werewolf, not a wenwolf. Laugh. You give it tentacles. 